Prime Minister, thanks so much for talking to the ABC. Good to be with you, Steve. A start date for the free trade agreement has been agreed upon between the UK and Australia. When will that be and what will be the immediate benefits for Australia? Well, it will be in place by, by May 31st. It's uh, completed its uh, parliamentary processes here and, of course, uh, we completed our processes at the end of last year. What it will mean, put simply, is more access to the market here for our goods and services. But it will also have changes to the labour market, uh, increased periods in which Australians can work here and vice versa, and increased ages as well. What are you looking forward to about the coronation on Saturday? Well, it's a moment in history, isn't it? In, in, in our lifetime, this is the first time there's been a transition of power uh, after uh, his mother, uh, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, served for 70 years, uh, a remarkable period of service and, and diligence and duty uh, that uh, Queen Elizabeth showed over such a long period of time. And Saturday will be uh, the formal uh, recognition of the, the fact that we have a, a new head of state uh, under, under our system. And you're going to take the oath of allegiance to the King on Saturday. Why would a lifelong Republican do that? Well, the same reason why we do it when we're sworn or affirm uh, into, into Parliament. Except you have uh, to do it then. You don't, this is voluntary. I mean, if, for example, the Archbishop of Canterbury is going to ask the congregation, and I'll quote, all who desire to take the oath of allegiance. Sounds like you've got an out there. Well, I think as the Australian Prime Minister, uh, people expect uh, me to not come to the King's coronation in order to create a controversy. Uh, and I'll follow protocol uh, just as I followed protocol uh, with Her Majesty's death uh, last year. A lot of Australians may find this particular protocol a bit weird and a bit irrational because you'll be taking an oath of allegiance not just to the king but his heirs and its successors that includes prince andrew that includes people who haven't even been born yet whose character you couldn't possibly evaluate that must strike you as a particularly irrational oath well if if people aren't born it's unlikely i'll be here when they become uh, the, uh, the, the monarch. And Australia's constitutional arrangements, of course, are up to Australia uh, in the future to determine. And King Charles is very much on the record as saying that he respects the right of nation states who are part of the Commonwealth to determine their own constitutional arrangements. And as a Republican, uh, I think at some stage uh, that will change when Australia is ready for that. But it's not up to me as Prime Minister to impose my position on Australia. Julian Assange has been held in prison here in London for over five years now. Should his family and his friends and his supporters hold any optimism that this could be the year when the US finally drops those extradition proceedings against him? Well, my position is that enough is enough. And I continue to say in private what I said publicly as Labor leader and what I've said as Prime Minister, that enough is enough. This needs to be brought to a conclusion. Uh, it needs to be uh, worked through, including we're working through diplomatic channels, but we're making very clear uh, what our position is on, on Mr Assange's case. President Biden, who you describe as a friend, will be in Australia this month for the Quad. Will you be raising it again with him? The way that diplomacy works, Steve, is probably not to forecast uh, the uh, discussions that you will have uh, or have had uh, with uh, leaders of other nations. Uh, that's something that in, in the past, I'm not someone who will ever release a text message from another leader. Uh, I'll engage diplomatically in order to achieve an outcome. And I know it's frustrating. Uh, I share the frustration. I can't do more than make very clear uh, what my position is, and the US administration is certainly uh, very aware of what the Australian government's position is. Just over a year ago, a coalition of 21 free speech and human rights organisations signed a letter calling on the US to drop 
the charges against Assange, saying the prosecution of Assange undermines the country's ability to defend journalists against repression by authoritarian and other rights-abusing regimes abroad. Now, this was before the war in Ukraine. This was before Russia charged an, an American journalist with espionage. Do you think the US needs to look at the Assange case in this context, what message it sends to authoritarian regimes? I think that the Assange case needs to be looked at in terms of uh, what occurred, what the allegations are, and whether uh, the time effectively that has been served already, already is in excess of what would be reasonable if it were proved that uh, this had occurred. Uh, when Australians uh, look at uh, the circumstances, look at the fact that um, the, the person who released the information is uh, walking freely uh, now, having served some time uh, in, uh, in incarceration, uh, but is now released for a, a long period of time, then they'll see that there's a, a disconnect there. There is nothing to be served by his ongoing incarceration. And I am concerned about Mr. Assange's mental health. There was a court decision here in the United Kingdom that was then overturned on appeal that went to uh, Mr. Assange's health as well. And I am concerned for him.